minimal access approach to the proximal femur for intramedullary nailing. Great presentation with great illustrations. The 27th of November 2022. This video has been produced from a book source. We would like to thank editors Stanley Hoppenfeld, Pete De Boer, Richard Buckley, and we would like express special thanks for the medical illustrator Huey Thomas. The minimal access approach to the proximal femur is used for the insertion of intramedullary nails for the treatment of the following. 1. Acute femoral shaft fractures. 2. Pathological femoral shaft fractures. 3. Delayed union and nonunion of femoral shaft fractures. The entry point for the insertion of an intramedullary nail into the femur is determined radiographically. It depends on the design of the nail and the anatomy of the proximal femur in the individual patient. The majority of intramedullary nails are straight when viewed in the anterior-posterior plane. The nail should be inserted so that its entry point into the bone is exactly in line with the intramedullary canal on both anterior-posterior and lateral radiographs. The use of preoperative templates overlying radiographs allows for a precise calculation of the entry point. The nearest anatomical landmark to this entry point is the piriform fossa, but it cannot be used reliably in all patients because it does not always line up with the intramedullary canal in both planes. In addition, the fossa cannot be palpated because of overlying musculature. For nails that are straight when viewed in the anterior-posterior plane, the skin incision, the entry point of the nail in the bone, and the medullary canal of the femur should all be in a straight line. Some nails are angled at their upper end and require insertion via the tip of the greater trochanter. These nails require a skin incision directly over the tip of the greater trochanter. Position of the patient. Two positions are available for the insertion of femoral nails. The supine position allows easier control of fracture reduction and distal locking of the nail. Figure. The lateral position allows easier access to the entry point in the proximal end of the femur. Supine position. Place the patient supine on a traction table. Employ traction using a supracondylar femoral pin or a traction boot. Adduct the leg as much as possible around the traction post to make it anatomically possible to enter the upper end of the femur via the skin on the lateral aspect of the buttock. Laterally flex the trunk of the patient away from the operative side. Flex and abduct the opposite hip and flex the knee, placing the leg in a support. See figures. Ensure that adequate anterior, posterior and lateral radiographs of the entry point of the nail and the fracture site can be obtained. Be sure that the fracture is reduced or reducible before commencing surgery. Although this may be time-consuming, it is important to obtain good quality radiographs before commencing surgery, or you will struggle to obtain quality imaging during the case. Five minutes of preoperative time may shorten your operating time by two hours. In displaced subtrochanteric femoral shaft fractures, the proximal fragment will flex and abduct due to the unopposed pull of the PSOAS and the abductor muscles. Displaced proximal femoral fractures cannot be reduced by traction alone. Control of the proximal fragment frequently requires percutaneous insertion of a Steinman pin into the proximal fragment, allowing its manipulation. Inserting a nail in a very obese patient cannot be done successfully in the supine position. Figure A. Adducting the leg moves the skin incision distally. B. In obese patients, Nailing in this supine position is impossible. Note that even with maximal adduction, the ideal incision lies above the iliac crest. Lateral position. Place the patient in a lateral position on a traction table with the affected limb uppermost. Apply traction to the femur through a distal supracondylar pin or a plaster boot. Adduct the leg over the traction pole. Place the contralateral limb in a flexed position at both hip and knee. Take care to pad the bony prominences of the bottom leg to prevent skin breakdown due to pressure. Ensure that adequate anterior, posterior and lateral radiographs of the entry point and the fracture site can be obtained. The fracture must be reduced or reducible before commencing surgery. 
proximal femoral fractures will require ancillary modes of reduction Steinman pins see supine position above the lateral position allows easier access to the proximal femur than the supine position because it allows more reduction which is particularly useful in obese patients in cases of extreme obesity even this position may not permit successful intramedullary nailing such patients are probably best treated by a retrograde nailing technique with an entry point into the bone in the intercondylar notch. Landmarks and incision. Landmarks. The greater trochanter is a large mass of bone that projects upward and backward from the junction of the shaft of the femur and its neck. See figure. The anterior superior iliac spine can be felt as the anterior margin of the iliac crest. See figure. The shaft of the femur can be felt as resistance through the massive vastus lateralis muscle on the lateral side of the thigh. Incision. There are two techniques for planning the correct placement of the incision. Radiographic technique. Palpate the shaft of the femur on the lateral aspect of the thigh through the bulk of the vastus lateralis muscle. With a marker pen, draw a line on the skin, marking the lateral aspect of the shaft of the femur figure. This line is erved because the femur is bowed anteriorly when viewed in the lateral plane. Extend this gently curving line proximal to the tip of the greater trochanter, up to the level of the iliac crest, figure. Place a long guide wire, such as a reaming guide wire, on the anterior aspect of the thigh. Using radiographic control, Ensure that the guide wire is overlying the center of the medullary canal when viewed in the anterior posterior plane. Figure. Place a long guide wire on the anterior surface of the thigh and position it under image intensifier control so that its image overlies the center of the medullary canal of the femur. Take a long artery forceps and move it proximally along the drawn line on the lateral aspect of the thigh. When the image of the forceps coincides with the image of the guide wire radiographically, mark the skin. Take a long artery forceps and move it proximally along the line you have drawn on the skin. Screen this instrument using an image intensifier in the anterior posterior planes, see figure. When the image of the tip of the forceps coincides with the guide wire radiographically, mark the skin, see figure. This skin mark will be the center of the skin incision. A wire inserted through this incision and through the correct entry point in the bone will pass perfectly down the center of the medullary canal of the femur in both anterior posterior and lateral planes. If the patient is obese and or you are unable to adduct the leg, then this entry point will be above the level of the iliac crest, see figure. Such an entry point is clearly not usable. If this is the case, then alternative techniques using curved instrumentation will need to be used through a more proximally based incision. Landmark technique. Palpate the shaft of the femur through the bulk of the vastus lateralis muscle. With a marker pen, draw a curved line on the skin of the lateral aspect of the thigh, marking the shaft of the femur. See figure. Extend this line proximally beyond the tip of the greater trochanter curving it slightly posteriorly. Palpate the anterior superior iliac spine. Draw a line perpendicularly downward from the iliac spine toward the buttock. The incision should be centered at the point where these two lines cross. Figure. Draw a line perpendicularly downwards from the anterior superior iliac spine. Where this line crosses the previously drawn line on the lateral aspect of the thigh, mark the skin. Incision. Make a longitudinal incision centered on the skin mark. The size of the incision depends on the type of nail to be used. Nails that have proximal interlocking jigs that are considerably offset from the nail can be inserted through a 3 cm incision. Nails whose proximal jigs attach close to the nail require a longer skin incision, up to 7 cm.
Internervous plane. There is no internervous plane or intramuscular plane. The dissection splits fibers of the gluteus maximus and gluteus medius, but does not denervate either muscle. Superficial surgical dissection. Incise the subcutaneous fat and the fascia overlying the gluteus maximus in line with the incision. Split the fibers of gluteus maximus for 3 cm in the line of its fibers using a curved clamp. Deep surgical dissection. Continue the dissection distally using a long curved clamp to split the fibers of the gluteus medius muscle to gain access to the proximal femur. Careful use of a finger as a blunt dissector to identify the medial aspect of the greater trochanter is often helpful as well. Insert a marker wire, or rod, through the completed dissection onto the proximal end of the femur, and adjust the position of the wire using X-ray control in both anterior posterior and lateral planes until the wire is at the correct entry point into the bone. The wire must line up with the intramedullary canal on both anterior posterior and lateral planes. Figures. Deep surgical dissection. Continue the dissection distally using a long curved clamp to split the fibers of the gluteus medius muscle to gain access to the proximal femur. Careful use of a finger as a blunt dissector to identify the medial aspect of the greater trochanter is often helpful as well. Insert a marker wire, or rod, through the completed dissection onto the proximal end of the femur, and adjust the position of the wire using X-ray control in both anterior posterior and lateral planes until the wire is at the correct entry point into the bone. The wire must line up with the intramedullary canal on both anterior posterior and lateral planes. Figures. Dangers. Bone deformity. The presence of an incorrect entry point is potentially hazardous in intramedullary nailing of the femur. An entry point that is too far lateral commonly occurs. This will create a varus deformity at the fracture site if the nail used is rigid, and the fracture is in the proximal third of the femur. Lateral entry points may also create an iatrogenic fracture of the medial femoral cortex during nail insertion. An entry point that is too far medial may create an iatrogenic fracture of the femoral neck, usually a vertical basicervical fracture. On occasion, medial entry points may also damage the blood supply to the femoral head, creating a vascular necrosis. Nerves. The superior gluteal nerve runs posteriorly to anteriorly through the substance of the gluteus medius muscle 3 to 5 cm above the tip of the greater trochanter. If the femur is adducted, the nerve will not be damaged during insertion of a nail. If, however, a retrograde nailing technique is used when the femur is not necessarily abducted, then damage to the nerve may occur. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Subscribe Orthopedics Trauma in YouTube.